Welcome to Java Fundamentals for Android, part four. In this video, we'll be talking about collections, arrays and array lists. We often need to deal with a collection or a group of items. And if we're dealing with a list, then we wanna use a data structure that represents that entire list. And one data structure that allows us to do this is the array. Think of an array like a column in an Excel spreadsheet with a fixed length. Each cell has some contents. The contents are all of the same type, say strings. Each cell also has a row number or an index associated with it. The important thing to remember in Java is that this index starts at zero, not one. So the first element has index value zero. So here's how we declare an array of integers. It's int, square brackets, and then the variable name. However, we can make an array of any type of object, say type donut. So you'd have donut, square brackets, my box of donuts as the variable name. Declaring an array always follows the pattern of type, square brackets, variable name. And the square brackets are basically what tells Java that we're creating an array. The important thing with arrays in Java is that we have to tell the compiler how big the array is gonna be before we can use it. So with our donut array, we would initialize this as follows. My box of donuts equals u donut, and then in the square brackets, the array size. Now that we've got an array of size five, we still have to populate it with something. And the way we go about populating array is by assigning a value to a particular element at a given index. So if it's my box of donuts, square brackets zero equals plain donut, we've just assigned the plain donut item to the first element in the array. And for the last element in the array, it would be my box of donuts four equals rat poison donut. And remember, you wouldn't have my box of donuts five because that would be out of bounds. That's outside the range of the array because we only have five elements. So similar to assigning a particular piece of data to a part of the array, we also use this index to retrieve a particular element from the array. So here we're retrieving the third element from the donut array. At this point, you can probably already see how loops and arrays make great partners in many situations because you can iterate through the array using a loop. The next thing I wanna talk about are array lists. There are some limitations to using arrays that this class kind of gets around. And the important one of those is arrays can't grow or shrink in size. So we can't just append a sixth element to an array which has size five. This is why the array list was created. And the ArrayList is a class with a bunch of methods in it that allow us to get around this limitation. And here is the syntax for creating an ArrayList. ArrayList angle brackets type of the type of data that you're gonna put into the ArrayList, then the variable name equals new ArrayList. So in contrast to arrays, we don't actually have to specify the size of the ArrayList in advance. So here's an example of how we can initialize an array list. Array list, angle brackets, string, mad dictators equals new array list. We can now add items to this array list by calling the add method from the array list class. You simply have the name of your array list variable, in this case, mad dictators, then the dot operator, then the add method and inside the brackets, you have the contents of the data that you wanna to add to the array. So we're doing that three times, and now we have an array list of size three because it contains three elements. And similar to the array, you're gonna use an index to retrieve elements from the array list. So if you wanna retrieve the first element and store it in a variable called first element, then we will put the array list name, mad dictators, the dot operator, and then we're gonna use the get method with the index of zero for the first element. The array list class actually has quite a few methods. There's a remove method, 
which takes an index value as an argument and it removes an item at the index value from the array list. There's a size method to get the length of the array list. There's a clear method which clears the entire list. But luckily, there's no need to remember all these methods because Oracle, who wrote this class, actually lists them out online in their documentation. So you can actually just look them up. So in summary, arrays allow us to store a group of objects of the same type. However, we must declare the size of the array before being able to use it. And the square brackets signal that we're creating an array or using one. Finally, we set and retrieve elements from the array or using the, the row number or index value of the element. An array list, on the other hand, can grow and shrink in size in contrast to the array. And the type of object that's stored in the array list is specified between the angle brackets. The array list also has a bunch of methods that we can call on it, like add or get to add elements or retrieve elements respectively. Thanks for watching. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about inheritance and interfaces.